So the last topic in the, in the stoichiometry problems, in the stoichiometry unit, is the percent yield information. So percent yield is very simple. You've actually done it twice already, so these should be no-brainers of notes for you. When we do percent yield, we always talk about what's called theoretical yield. And the theoretical yield is the amount of product that should be formed in a chemical reaction. The only way to figure this out is by stoichiometry. And FYI, yield and product go hand in hand. Okay? So anytime you see the word yield, it always means product. This is what I want as my end result. So a theoretical yield is the amount of product. So in all of these, I'm always going to be looking at product. Percent yield, if you want to calculate the percent yield, you take the actual yield, and this comes from the experiment, and you divide it by the theoretical yield, which is basically what you should have gotten. Okay? So the actual is what you got, the theoretical is what you should have gotten. And you multiply by 100 because, of course, it's a percentage, and it's percent yield. Easy. How about percent error? Well, actually, percent error is the flip of percent yield. So what you do is you take your actual minus your theoretical, divide by the theoretical, absolute value of that because it is possible to come out to be a negative, and you multiply by 100. These two should be opposites. So if your percent yield is high, your percent error is low. And they should be opposites to 100. And beyond 100, then you've got other issues. But so like if you have a 90% yield, you have a 10% error. That's how it works. Okay, nice and simple. Let's do a quick example. What is the percent yield of the reaction if 13 grams of aluminum react to produce only 100.5 grams of aluminum iodide? So I took the chemical reaction from the previous podcast, and I put it into this example. Now, in order to do this, again, notice they give it me, it says to produce only 100.5. Well, this number here is going to be my actual. And since this is the first time that we've encountered a problem in which there's an actual, chem an actual formula, mathematical formula we can use, the first thing I always recommend doing is writing down your formula. Because if you write down your formula, you can plug in certain numbers right away. So I know that percent yield is actual minus theoretical times one, I'm sorry, over theoretical times 100. My yield, my actual yield is 100.5 grams because it says it reacts to produce this. So I know that's my actual. I don't have my theoretical. That, of course, we know has to be calculated by stoichiometry and you're almost always going to be solving for that when you're doing these problems. So let's do some stoichiometry. It tells me that I have 13 grams of aluminum. Now you notice that nowhere in this problem does it say what I actually produced. Well, there's only one product here. So if I didn't produce that product, I don't know what I actually produced. So let's compare the aluminum to, alu to the aluminum iodide. So you've got two aluminums to two Al-I3s. So unfortunately, I don't remember what aluminum iodide weighs, so I'm going to recalculate that. 26.98 times 126.9 times 3 is really wrong because it's not supposed to be times, it's supposed to be plus. Good. I'm glad you guys caught that and I missed that. Good job, Mr. Siegel. Okay, let's change that to a plus. There we go, 407.68. Okay, multiply through everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom. So I've got 13 times 2 times that 407.68, which I'm just going to hit second answer because it's a lot easier, divided by my 20... 20 6.9 times 2 is 196.4. Okay, so this number here represents my theoretical yield. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it in over here. Divide my two numbers. So I take 
0.5 divided by the answer I just got multiplied by 100 so my yield is 51.2 percent and that's it that's as hard as percent yields really get the only other thing I could possibly do to you is combine the limiting reagent in with the percent yield so now you have to do two stoichiometry problems figure out which one is producing the smaller amount and bam solve from there otherwise it doesn't get any harder than that for percent yield. So hopefully we've covered everything successfully. In the last podcast, I'm just going to go over example problems related to all three of the topics. Stoichiometry, straight-up stoichiometry, limiting reagents, and combining it with percent yield and percent error.